Now to a Fox News alert. President Obama laid out his case last night for intervention in Syria, arguing that the, the U.S. national security interests are at stake. Why should we get involved at all in a place that's so complicated and where, as one person wrote to me, those who come after Assad may be enemies of human rights? It's true that some of Assad's opponents are extremists. But al-Qaeda will only draw strength in a more chaotic Syria if people there see the world doing nothing to prevent innocent civilians from being gassed to death. But are U.S. strikes the best way to prevent al-Qaeda from gaining ground in Syria, or will it only make this worse? Let's ask the former chief of staff to President George W. Bush, Andy Card. Good morning to you. Good morning, Gretchen. Good to be with you in this day of remembrance. Of course, and we're going to get to September 11th in just a moment. I do need you to comment on the president's speech last night because you would know better than anybody as the closest advisor to a former president of the United States in times of war what the president should do and what you would advise them to do. When you look at the situation that's been developing with Syria and President Obama over the last few weeks, how would you have advised him differently or the same? Oh, I, I want the President of the United States to speak with authority to the world, to have resolve and command respect, and be a little bit feared. And I suspect that President Obama hasn't lived up to that expectation over the last several weeks. And so I think the world is confused by what President Obama is saying. He's called for action, and then he said, don't do anything. Mm -hmm. And he told us how terrible the atrocities in Syria are and how they cannot stand. But he says, stand by and we'll consider doing something later on. So I'm troubled that uh, the president doesn't look like he is in command of the situation or that he is really got his finger on the pulse of reality dealing with diplomacy around the world. Mm -hmm. I know he has his hand on the political situation in the United States. He understands the tough politics of a decision like this, but I'm concerned that he is not furthering the cause of American leadership around the world. Mm -hmm. You know, when I found out last night that I'd be interviewing you on this topic, I couldn't help to think about how much your former boss, President Bush, took flack for some of his very strong positions on things. However, do you see it as ironic today that you know, he was a president that stood up and said, here's what I think, and you can disagree with me or not, but here's what I think. And do you see a complete difference in President Obama in the way that he handles situations like this? Well, President Bush would very seriously do his homework and understand when a decision was necessary, and he had the courage to make a decision. He didn't make a decision based on which way the political winds were blowing. He made a decision what he thought was right for the country, and he accepted the consequences of his decision. He had the courage to decide. He was a decider. Mm -hmm. President Obama seems to have uh, his finger in the air most of the time, looking to see which way the political winds are blowing, and I think he's afraid to make some of the tough decisions that presidents have to make. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I'm troubled by the kind of leadership we're seeing in Washington, D.C. right now. But I want President Obama to be strong, and I want America's leadership to be respected around the world. Of course. And today, of course, is September 11th. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since you went in and told President Bush in that classroom what had happened. Uh, would we be any safer with regard to Syria now if we strike or we don't strike with regard to this being September 11th? Well, I have to admit, I don't think the situation in Syria represents a, a present threat to the United States national security interests or to the American people. So I think it's a little different than the situations that President Bush addressed. But I do feel that when President Obama said that there was a red line and that Syria had crossed the red, li red line, or Bashir Assad had crossed the red line, and that there would be a consequence, that you, you couldn't be hollow in offering a, a consequence, and he had to follow through. Mm -hmm. But I think I think the diplomatic challenges should have been addressed over the course of the last several re weeks rather than call for a vote in Congress and then ask for it to be postponed. Mm -hmm. But President Bush, on the other hand, I think that he was uh, very deliberate about how he made his decisions, and I respected how he made those decisions, mm -hmm. and he had the courage to make them, and we worked very hard to make sure that his decisions, uh, once implemented, lived up to his expectations. Right, and I'm sure that you got into disagreements from time to time, and that brings me to the next topic about this documentary that's coming out tonight, 9 p.m. on the Discovery Channel, called The President's Gatekeepers. It looks fascinating. Let's take a peek.
We're flying in a serpentine way, waiting for fighter jets to come up and protect us. And the whole time, the president is telling me we're going back to Washington. The Secret Service is telling me we can't go back there until we know much more about what's happening. And I just said, Mr. President, I, I really can't recommend that. And he was angry with you, right? Yes, he was. We had a, uh, he was pretty angry with me. I tried to stay cool, calm, and collected. And all I kept saying to him, Mr. President, I don't think you really want to make that decision. And the truth is, the pilot on Air Force One was reluctant to fly to Andrews Air Force Base. The Secret Service was very concerned about the situation in Washington, D.C. There were too many unknowns. And I thought it would be best to the president to uh, allow us to go to Barksdale Air Force Base and kind of regroup and yep. then go to Strategic Air Command and, and meet with faculty on members of the White House staff, if you will, and then come back to Washington once we knew what was going on. But the president was adamant about getting back to Washington, D.C. He eventually got his way, and we went back there, and he addressed the nation that night. Yeah. But well, people should check it out tonight on the Discovery Channel, 9 o'clock, the president's gatekeepers. Andy Card, you were one of the gatekeepers, and I appreciate you getting up so early and being our guest today. Have a great rest of the week. Thank you, Gretchen.